Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So this vlog is going to be brought to you in two parts um, and I'm doing that because we're only halfway through January at the moment so I still have a few makes that I need to crack on with um, but I've finished the toaster sweater for my friend who lives a few doors down so I wanted to show you that to you before I obviously give it to her. Um, but what I will try and do is get her to take a photo of herself wearing it so you can see I did have her try it on part way through construction um, before I put the hem band and the cuffs on just to check the fit was okay um, and it was I added four inches to the bodice length before adding the hem band on and that was perfect for her because she's five foot seven and a half so a little bit taller than me um, and I only added two and a half inches on mine um, so yeah, I added four inches on hers and that fitted lovely. So fingers crossed, now the hem band's on, it fits okay because obviously it's a little bit snugger around the hips um, because it's supposed to sit obviously sort of low waist area. Um, so I'll show you it um, anyway. It's uh, this lovely quilted jersey fabric from Fabric Godmother. Um, I ordered two meters, which you do need for this um, as it is quite fabric hungry. Um, the body sections actually don't take that much fabric but the arms do um, and the hem band does as well I think so yeah that's why you need two meters um, so I, I do still have some of this left I don't know what I'm going to do with it um, but yeah as you can see if I move back slightly um, you can see that it's quite long in the body there and the hem bands at the bottom I do just need to give that a quick press um, and I've overlocked all of the um, insides using my overlock Foot on my um, standard sewing machine so I haven't got an overlocker um, so I just use, use my standard sewing machine for this and I uh, yeah, just use my overlock foot to zigzag all the edges because this is quite fluffy so um, it does tend to shed quite a bit of the interior of the, this fabric um, but it's beautiful fabric and when she tried it on it really suited her so I'm really pleased with that so yeah like I say I'll try and get her to take a photo of herself wearing it so I can sort of insert it into this video. Um, and then the next thing I've finished so far is the first one of out of the two um, field trip raglan t-shirt patterns by Oliver and S. Um, so this is the first one that my son has been wearing so it might be a bit dirty on the front because I haven't washed it yet um, and I added a bit of length to the body because this only goes up to age four in the pattern that I've got. I think you can get another um, pattern pack for older ages but yeah I've just got the one that goes up to age four and he's five um, yeah and I just added a bit of length I probably added probably way too much but um, lots of growing room and I added the the cuffs at the bottom and the hem band as well which I really like doing on these I did have a bit of a nightmare with the um, with the net band on this one um, and that's because I um, found that when I did it for my twins it was a little bit tight to put over their head using the standard pattern piece so I um, added a bit onto the pattern piece for the age four but I ended up adding too much um, and then when I tried it on him the next day it uh, was way too big around his neck and you'll see if you follow me on Instagram there's a photo on there um, where you can see it does protrude quite a bit around the neck area so I wasn't happy with that and I unpicked it all and then redid the neck band again just by cutting a little bit off um, and then I think it was still too big um, so I then had to unpick it again and then I did it a third time and it is still slightly too big I don't know why um, because when I cut out the standard pattern piece it, it just seemed that it was going to be way too tight to go over his head so I didn't want to use it like that so I think when I come to do the second one of these for his cousin um, I'm going to use the pattern piece but then only add maybe a couple of centimetres so that it's not too big and not too small because I think his head is slightly bigger than my son's. Um, yeah, but I'm pleased with the jumper overall and he likes it and um, he's got gotten on with wearing it quite fine. So I will, yeah, remake these again and again. The second part of this video that you'll see coming up then uh, will be of the bean bags and hopefully the peg bag and the cocoa top for my mum. So um, yeah, halfway through January and I've just managed to get those two things done so far. Hi everyone, so welcome back to part two of my January makes. Um, 
I really apologise for the bad lighting that I've got on this video. I've had to change location in the house just because my twins are actually having a, a sleep at the moment. I usually film in my bedroom because I have a bay window that can uh, give in a lot of light. Um, yeah, so I'm filming in the front room, um, but it's just, yeah, not very good lighting. It's such a grey day. Anyway, um, I'll crack on with what I've got to show you. So I've managed to make everything that I wanted to for the month of January, so I'm really pleased. Um, so I'll show you the um, Oliver and S raglan t-shirt pattern which is the field trip raglan t-shirt which i obviously make into a sweater um, fabric from guthrie and garney so this is the second one that i've made and this is for my nephew for his birthday at the end of february and i got on much better with this one than i did with my sons i only added two centimeters to the neckband pattern piece from um the pattern for the age four and that worked perfectly so fingers crossed he can get it over his head head okay i have tried it on my son and he can get it over his head fine so fingers crossed that he can get it over his um and i have overlocked actually the edge of the um the neckband piece just because i do like that finish but i didn't manage to do that on my son because obviously i had to unpick it about three times so i did end up with quite a bit of ripped fabric around the top so there wasn't really enough room for me to actually get a good amount that I could put under my overlock foot um, but I'm really pleased with how this has turned out so I've again added the the cuffs and the the waistband and added length to the bodice as well so it's the same length as my son's um, because my nephew he actually turns six so this is an age four pattern that I've used so I've just added length so that should be fine because they don't really get any wider as they get older yeah so I'm really pleased with that so that's ready to be wrapped up for his birthday um, and then the next thing I've got to show you is a peg bag for my mum that I made and that was from this book So Fabulous Fabric and uh, it shows you the pattern in here um, and I've made one for myself previously so she's seen it and said oh could you make me a new one because hers had fallen apart and I had some leftover fabric um, from a remnant that I picked up I think it was from Dunelm and I'm, I'm sure it's like a backing fabric for curtains like thermal lined curtains or something because it's got a fleece fleecy um, side to it so I didn't actually have to use any wadding um, which you don't really have to but it does say to use canvas for the outer fabric so I use this and I've just appliqued on some pictures which is from my the material that I use for my eldest son's bean bag so it was like this uh, sort of foresty theme um, camping and things like that so I used it so the bear was showing <laughs> in this section and then just made it so that I had a few bits on there to keep it in with that uh, sort of theme so I really like how that's turned out and um, so I think she'll be really pleased with that so she can pop her peg bags in it and hang her washing out now and um, yeah so that's that one and then I've just finished the cocoa top for my mum also and this fabric was from Crafty So and So in Leicester so it's a floral ponte Roma nice navy blue colour and it's really nice quality so I don't think that will bobble it feels quite like a sheeny kind of ponte Roma. Um, I've just zigzag stitched around the neckline and on the the sleeve hems and the um, the bottom of the the top. I usually use a twin needle, um, but I just didn't have another spool of thread to put on my machine, so I just um, zigzagged. And you can't see that anyway because it's the same colour thread as this blue. Um, yeah, so that's worked out fine. Um, the only problem is, she tried it on part way through construction and I just basted the side seams and down, down the arms just to check for fit and it fitted fine. But then the neck, it was quite wide on her, whereas this is my cocoa dress and it, it sits, you know, fine without showing my bra straps off. But for my mum, she did um, find that her bra straps were showing like this. So she must have narrow shoulders or something. Um, yeah, and I did wonder about putting the funnel neck on to... Um, bring the neck in a little bit but then she said no then she wouldn't really wear this top during the summer so I was like well that's true so I just have carried on doing it as the the standard neckline and I've um I've put stay tape in there to stabilize that neckline so it won't stretch out I do find that a little bit of a fiddle to put in actually but I managed to sort it out and um yeah so she's going to be uh happy with that hopefully so I, I said to her just wear a vest top underneath if it shows your bra straps off too much um yes yeah, so that's that done and um, so i'm really pleased with that uh, so finally she gets her birthday present from august <laughs> the next thing i have to show you is the bean bags for my twins so one i got done in december which you've seen and 
you could see that I wasn't overly happily happy with the um, the amount of beans that were in it. It just doesn't wasn't very poofy. So um, I actually ordered a second bag of beans, and I actually then um, opened up the inner and I added some more beans to it, so it is more poofy. And then the second one, I just literally used all of the beans um, from from the bean from the bag that I bought and uh, filled it completely. So I actually put the inner inside the outer before I stitched it up. So I, I tipped all the beans into a bucket and then was using a pint glass to literally put them in. And I thought, well, when I come to wash it, okay, I'm gonna have an issue getting the inner out, but I'll deal with that when I come to it. If I have to unpick the seam and take some of the beans out, then so be it, because I just wasn't happy with how much um, was in there. It just wasn't enough. And my eldest son's bean bag, he's used it ever such a lot and it does need more beans putting in it now because they've got obviously a bit squished so for these if there wasn't enough beans in it then they, they would have been flat as a pancake after about a year so I'll show you them anyway because I'm now happy with them and um, so you can see now it's much much fuller so I'm really pleased with that and um, and again the zip is still in the side because I'd already cut out the second one so I couldn't put the, the zip on the bottom but um, if you do ever come to make these bean bags, I advise to put the zip in the bottom. Um, yeah, so that's number one done and number two done. So yeah, both nice, nice and poofy now. So I'm looking forward to giving those to my twins for their birthday um, mid-Feb. So they all, they all like to sit on them when they're watching um, DVDs or listening to their nursery rhymes or something on a CD. Um, and that f particular pattern for that bean bag was out of the Kath Kidston book so and there's her version here so she's used obviously her own fabric that you can get from their shop um, and that fabric which I used was from Dunelm and that was really quite reasonable I think it was about £10 a metre and you only need a metre for that um, that bean bag I know you could probably buy a bean bag cheaper but you know they're made by mummy <laughs> so um, okay uh, I think that's everything then for um, for January and I'll insert a picture of my mum wearing her top or a video clip or something and I've also had a picture from my friend Anna of her in her toaster sweater so I'll attach that as well it's not a brilliant quality photo and um, so I hope you'll be able to see but you can see sort of where the length falls on her Okay, so I also just wanted to say thank you very much for your lovely comments from in my, in my last vlog um, where I mentioned that my nan had passed away. So I just want to say thank you ever so much to everybody who commented on my uh, vlog about that. We've just had a funeral actually and it was a um, really nice service and I did a eulogy and I just about managed to get through reading it to everybody. It was quite an emotional day. Um, yes, yeah, so that, was, that was really nice. So thank you ever so much. Uh, for commenting on that and uh, I want to tribute this um, vlog to my nan because she was a real crafty person herself so I'm sure that I've inherited the the crafty genes she um, she taught me how to knit actually when I was younger um, and I just did like the basic knit and purl stitch and that kind of thing and just made scarves and stuff when I was younger and then I obviously never bothered picking it up again but when I was in my 20s I decided, yeah, I'd like to, to pick up knitting again. So my mum, she also learned from my nan, um, she taught, re taught me the stitches and uh, helped me to follow a pattern on making a, a cardigan for a little baby, uh, start off small. And um, I do actually make quite a few cardigans for babies and things, you know, as gifts when my friends have them. Um, I have, did try and make a cardigan for myself and it is sort of still underway. Um, but I wasn't overly happy with how uh, it was finished, so I unpicked a lot of it. And I'll show you what I've done um, if you're interested in knitting. It's a really lovely pattern. Um, and I first found this pattern, I think Lauren at Guthrie and Garney had done it on her blog years ago. I'm talking probably four, five years ago. And um, it's called the Peacock Eyes Cardigan. Um, I have got the pattern here somewhere. Uh, by Justina Lorkowska, I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is um, it here. It's not a very good picture actually because the colour of the fabric that they've used or the colour of the wool, shall I say, that they've used, it doesn't give it any justice. But it's got a gorgeous, um, if I show you in here, pattern, which looks like a peacock eye. Oh, here we are. 
just here. Um, and I did a practice on that before I actually started knitting this up and um, I got on with it fine. So mine is in this lovely sort of cerise purple kind of colour and um, it's basically all knitted up. All I need to do is to put the button bands on because those are the bits I unpicked off it because I wasn't happy with how they were sitting. And also it's supposed to be three quarter length sleeves and initially I thought, oh no, I'm, I want it full sleeve, but then I tapered it in and then it was just too tight, so I should have just left it. So I unpicked that, so that's still on its needle and um, I need to decide what length I want to have the sleeves. But I've decided I'm, I'm not going to put buttonholes on. I'm gonna put um, some snaps on because I think it will help it to close better. Um, Cause I think I'd like just a few done up at the bottom and then to have it open. Um, whereas on this particular pattern, there are like 11 buttons that you should add. And I thought, well, I don't really want all those on there. So I'm gonna add some snaps onto it. So hopefully one day I'll get that finished. It's just been on the go for ages. And I know that knitting, you can just put it down and pick it back up again when you want to. Um, but yeah, so um, it's uh, but a lovely wool. I spent 35 pounds on this wool, so I really ought to get it done. Um, yeah, so that's a work in progress that I need to get finished. And I do have another little knitting project on the go. Um, and this is a cardigan that I've made over and over um, for little girls and babies. And uh, it's knit from the top down, which is actually what my other cardigans done. So there's no knitting or sewing up of the seams, which is great because I can't bear to knit, uh, sew the seams up on knitted garments. It takes forever and it's such a faff. Um, but yeah, this, so this is knitted from the top down and you get, create these little short sleeves. So it's still on its knitting needle at the minute because it's in progress. But this wool, it's actually only from Wilkinson's and I really like the effect. So I haven't done that. It just is, the, the wool's like that, you know, different multicoloured and it comes out in stripes. And it knits up really well, that one. And I've, I've given that away to friends for their babies quite a few times. And the pattern here, it, it shows you. You can see there um, how it sort of turns out. So you have three little buttons at the top and then it, it goes out sort of A-line. Really nice pattern. And I got that off the Ralvery website, I think it is. Um, I'll link the details down below if you're interested in knitting and, and wanted to do something like that. Um, yeah, so I need to get those finished. <laughs> Whether I'll get that cardigan done this year, or I don't know. I've got so many sewing things that I want to do, but it, it's a shame to have spent that money on that wool and not actually finish that. If somebody wants to knit it for me, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, so my nan, she was, she was ever such a crafty person. And I think she also taught my auntie how to knit. Um, but she also used her own mother's Singer sew machine, which was a 1907 model, I think. Um, and it hadn't got a foot pedal or a treadle or treadle, however you say it. Um, it had got a hand wheel. So she used to make me these twirly skirts when I was younger, the elasticated waist with this this you know, fabric that I used to be able to spin around and get these skirts to twirl out. And she used to use the hand wheel just to make those skirts for me, which is amazing. And I think we just take it for granted, don't we, that we've got these electronic machines that we can just whiz through um, making sewing projects on. And she was using that. And she still had it, literally. I think my auntie's now got it at her house. She said, oh, do you know, do you want it? And I said, well, not really. <laughs> um, because as, as much as it is a lovely family heirloom, it's... Um, not something that I wouldn't use, so I said, you know, for her to keep it really, um, because I have actually got an old Singer sewing machine, but that's been modified to have a um, a foot pedal on it with a motor, um, and that was given to me by a friend before I'd even got my own sewing machine. So I was just practicing doing straight lines on that, and that has actually been serviced. So I just wanted to keep hold of that because it's quite good for doing freehand machine embroidery on it, um, yeah, without any attachment on the needle. So you do have to be careful not to catch your fingers. But yes, yeah, so uh, yes, thank you, Nan, for letting me inherit these genes um, because sewing is my most favourite pastime right now, alongside running. Um, and this year I'm training Leicester Marathon. Um, so that was one of my um, sort of resolutions for this year, um, you know, aside from my sewing resolutions and things. Um, yeah, to run the Leicester Marathon again. I have done some marathons in the past, but this year I turned 40. So um, it was one of my goals to run another marathon in my 40th year. So I want to do the Leicester one, obviously, because it's local to me and it's quite a nice route. So I know a lot of um, the areas that we go through. Um, it can be quite a lonely run when you go out part off, you split from the half marathon section because there's a half marathon and a full marathon. And when you split off to do the full, you do end up going out into sort of the stigs and stuff and you don't um, 
you know, there's not a lot of support out there, but yeah, I'm going to be doing that. So I do find that one quite a nice one to do though, because it's sort of back end of the year, September time. Um, so you train throughout the summer months and I, I like training in the summer and running in the summer. You know, I like the light nights and the sun on my skin. So I remember the first year I did it, I got ever such a good tan. <laughs> um, it looked like I'd been on a sunbed, but I hadn't. It was purely from just out running about. So anyway, I'm rambling. So thank you ever so much for watching and tuning into this vlog. I hope you like the content. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time with my February plans video. Thanks a lot. Bye.